अन्मिलतम ये नम गुरुवे नम ओम नम ओम विष्णु पादया कृष्णा प्रेष्ठया भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांता स्वामिन इति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरावनी प्रचारिणे निवेशा शून्यवधि पश्चात देसी देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंदा श्री अद्वैता गदाधरा श्री वसदी गौरी भक्ता वृंदा हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत पते गोपेशा गोपी का कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तपा तपता कंचना गौरांगी राधा वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुता देवी प्रणमामी हरि प्रिया हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे थैंक यू मास्टर जी हरे कृष्णा डिपोटीज वेलकम टू टू डेज क्लास विल कंटिन्यू विद चैप्टर नंबर फिफ्टीन द योगा ऑफ सुप्रीम पर्सन और द पुरुषोत्तम योगा एंड we in th- uh, 14 chapter we learned about three modes of material nature and how to get out of those th- three modes of material nature that process was described in great detail in chapter number 12 the bhakti yoga which was totally focused on the steps of devotional services right from the uh, karma yoga to ultimately buddhi yoga gyan yoga buddhi yoga and ultimately bhakti yoga and in the last verse of chapter 12 lord said that bhakti yoga is the best we know why it is best because it is the swiftest and the fastest means that can reach take us to krishna loka within this life span others are very tedious and non practicable during this kal yoga and 14th chapter 14 we discussed about three modes of material nature how the soul is gets con- condition soul is consciousness we know the feature of soul is consciousness and the consciousness is pure at the time of birth but as as soon as association with material nature begins it becomes contaminated so now lord in this uh, chapter is telling what the real position of us is in relation to this material world in the first section we have uh, seen that becoming detached from the material world and reflection of the spiritual world lord has mentioned can anybody summarize what we studied in uh, verses number 1 to 5 the about the inverted banyan tree its comparison to the uh, this for this was a tree which we discussed about and what it is compared to and how different parts of this inverted banyan tree represent many many things which we come across in our day to day life can everybody recollect or give a just brief overview this was the summary table just make an attempt we were at verse number 5 anyway so i'll just quickly give a summary of what uh, what was what we learned in chapter number 15 verse number 1 to 5 so this world this material world is nothing but inverted image of the real spiritual world this world this material world is virtual the real world is uh, spiritual world we are lord krishna says it stays and the the tree is inverted like the image reflection of a tree that we see on the uh, surface of water Uh, the tree is standing near the banks of the uh, pond and that image that is reflection that is created in water that becomes inverted the roots are up and that so this material world is just like that inverted banyan tree which had banyan why word banyan tree has been mentioned because it is called akshay vat it is eternal in the beginning the beginning of this material world we do not know we don't do not know the middle we are just know a speck of this material world where we are residing beyond that our vision is very very limited so this nobody knows the beginning and or the middle of this world this material world and this world is uh, located on the water of desires 
the three modes of material nature nourish it. The branches are going up and down. The branches which are going up, they represent higher planets. The branches which are going down, they represent lower planets. And there are secondary roots also which are coming from the uh, this uh, tree and they are getting uh, grounded into the earth. These are fruitive activities. And the everybody, the people, the living entity is jumping from one branch to another. From that is means going from higher branch to lower branch, lower branch to higher branch, and you using you doing certain kinds of activities which are dharma, earth, and kama, and moksha. That these uh, ultimately there are uh, tricks which represent uh, sense objects. There are uh, uh, there are uh, tips of the uh, tricks. Or branches, those represent sense, sense, our sense organs. And the fruits are, of course, dharma, earth, and kamboksh. And the tips of the leaves represent Vedic hymns, that is, the knowledge of the Vedas. And the person who is wise, he will try to cut this tree uh, with the asanga sastrina. Asanga means detachment. He would like to cut this tree of material world, which is not real, which is not, uh, in fact, uh, it is just virtual reflection of the spiritual world, would like to cut this tree with intelligence and determination and with knowledge also. So why he wants to cut this material world? But he wants to cut this material world, gets detachment from this and wants to reach to his original base, that is the spiritual world. So this was a summary we had studied up to chapter uh, in this chapter so far. And who will be able to surrender? Now, after cutting, what is happening? But nobody can cut. We have seen a picture in which it was so difficult to cut because the tree is so strong and so strongly grounded that it is very difficult to cut it. But we have one has to have this detachment, number one. Secondly, one has to have a firm determination or then, then only one can cut this tree. So these two factors are up and who can cut successfully? Only one who has surrendered to the Lord. So up to verse number five, we have seen. And who can surrender? There are seven qualities which are mentioned here. And in fact, uh, one who is free from false passages or pride and freedom from illusion, as a dissociation of non-devotees, understanding this that uh, what is eternal, what is ephemeral, or what is transitory. And then one who is free from dualities and also one who knows that this material, this world is material, is not bewildered. Now, this in sections uh, two of this chapter, Purusha Uttama Yoga, we will see transmigration. Transmigration means transmigration of soul. How no, living entities do not understand how this process is taking place. So, Lord Krishna is going to describe in these five, uh, five six verses the transmigration of soul. Uh, yes. Uh, Mataji, Richard and Mataji, you said the prayers. Please continue. Yes, Prabhuji. Na Tvab Aase Te Suryo Na Shashanko Na Pavaka Yad Gvatva Na Nirvatante Taddham Param Mama That abode of mine is not illumined by the sun or moon nor by electricity. One who reaches it never returns to his material world. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. So now Lord is telling, now after giving the problems which exist in this material world, where we are struggling very, very hard. And you know, everybody is you know, struggling in this world. Whether it is a small office work or a home work, or even the living conditions, or right from the birth to the death, everybody is struggling in some or other form. We may consider that we are happy, but really we are not happy because as this happiness is transitory, it is not bliss, which is everlasting. The bliss lies only in devotional service. Material world gives us temporary or transitory happiness only. So now Lord is describing the, the uh, his spiritual world, that abode of mind, that Krishna Loka, or that the Goloka Vrindavana is not illuminated by the sun or moon, nor by electricity. One who reaches it never returns to how is, uh, what is the concept, uh, how this world is then illumined? What is making this bright, this spiritual world? Anyone? Brahma Jyoti. Brahma Jyoti. Brahma Jyoti, Brahma Jyoti yes, Mataji. Want something more than that is still higher. 
that this is this spiritual world is transcendental and Lord Krishna is present. So the light which is emitting from the transcendental body of Lord Krishna, that is making this world, the spiritual world, bright. And in material world, only Surya Loka is, uh, uh, is uh, um, uh, having its own brightness or uh, own light or it is self-illuminated. Only in it is Surya Loka is in material world. So rest of the us, you know, we also know that in our houses, if there is no electricity, there is no sun, there is no light. It is all dark. So it is Krishna who, whose presence is making this uh, uh, this planet bright and there is no need to, for electricity or any other kind of brightness or light because Krishna's transcendental body is limiting. And this uh, Krishna's body is this transcendental body that rays which are emitting, that is Brahma Jyoti. And which is understood by Mayavadis or Brahmavadis only. They do not know that this, this, this illuminance is coming from bodies of Krishna who is a person. Mayavadi believe that this, my, this uh, luminance of Brahma Jyoti is ultimate and it is the final and uh, last thing to consider and merge into. And one who reaches it never returns to this material world. That is the assurance that means yadvava na nivartante tad tadram paramam mam paramam mam. That is the greatness of my uh, abode that one who reaches there never returns to the earth. That means he never enters into the cycle of birth and death. So yes, Mother, please read this. This verse describes the spiritual world, the abode of Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, known as Krishna Loka or Goloka Vrindavan. In the spiritual sky, there is no need of sunshine, moon, fire or electri electricity because all the planets are self-luminous. We have only one planet in this universe, the sun, which is self-luminous, but all the planets in the spiritual sky are self-luminous. The shining effulgence of all those planets called Vekuntas constitutes the shining sky known as the Brahm Jyotir. So, we are conditioned soul. We are living entities, living in this dark world where light is required. But the, the people who are living, the devotees who are living in Krishna Loka, they are liberated soul and they are, they are living in light. And the light, we have already discussed how it is. So, why Krishna is telling all these things? Because we are living in dark. We have to go to the light, the planet where Krishna is living. So we have to go to Krishna Loka. So Krishna is telling that by the process of Asanga Shastrina, the cutting this material world with the detachment and with firm faith and surrender to Lord, one can attain my Lord, uh, abode where it is all bright all the time. No fire, no light, no electricity, nothing is needed. Yes, Mataji. Actually, the effulgence is emanating from the planet of Krishna, Goloka Vrindavan. Part of that shining effulgence is covered by the Mahatattva, the material world. The major portion of the shining sky is full of spiritual planets called Vekunthas, chief of which is Goloka Vrindavan. As long as a living entity is in the dark material world, he is in conditional life. As soon as he reaches the spiritual sky, by cutting through the false perverted tree of this material world, he becomes liberated with no chance of his coming back here. Oh, thank you, Mataji. This we have already discussed. Yes, please continue in the conditional life. In the conditional life, the living entity tends to lord over the material world. On entering the spiritual kingdom, after liberation, he becomes an associate of the Supreme Lord, enjoying eternal bliss, eternal life and full knowledge. Satchitananda. So, one should desire to transfer himself to that eternal world. For one too much attached to this material world, detachment becomes difficult. Only Krishna consciousness and association with Krishna consciousness devotees can help him. Thank you, Mataji. So we just now saw that this material world is dark where all, all kind of lights are required, but a spiritual world is all self-lit. There is no need for any kind of light. We are conditioned here. When we uh, detach 
ourselves from the material world by Asanga Shastrena and with the Dhrana uh, Nishche, then we go to the uh, this uh, supreme uh, super spiritual world and where person assumes the same body as Lord Krishna. And but the qualities are same, opulences are same, but in very, very minute quantity, quantitatively very low. So and the Krishna we know is Satchit Ananda Vigra. He is such an Ananda Murti. And uh, the devotee who get liberated, they reach there, they are also in a state of eternal bliss, knowledge, full of knowledge, and their life is eternal. There is, there is no birth and death there. So one should, uh, why surrender to Lord? One should try to go to the spiritual world, which is Krishna's own lo loka. So, and who can do it? Only those who surrender to Lord Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Just a saffron attire is not sufficient. He must become attached to the Lord in devotion. Paramam Mama means every nook and corner belongs to the Supreme Lord. The spiritual world is Paramam, full of six opulences. The Takhatha Upanishad 2.2.15 also confirms that in the spiritual world, there is no need of sunshine, moonshine or stars. Na tatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam. The entire spiritual sky is illuminated by the eternal potency of the Supreme Lord. Such a supreme abode can be attained only by surrender and by no other means. Thank you. So there is another proof from Vedic literature that is called Katha Upanishad. Na tatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam. There is neither sun, there is nor moon, nor chandra, nor tarakam is no stars. That it is self-illuminated because the Lord Krishna Himself is present. How one can reach again by surrender? And there is no other means. And Lord Krishna has described the process of surrender in great detail by uh, in the chapter twelve. Now we we see uh, we have discussed these three words. There is uh, you know uh, prayojan. Uh, 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 the sambandh avidhi and prayojan. What is sambandh? That, that sambandh is between us and Krishna is that he is the maintainer and we are the maintained person. That means whether in liberated state or in uh, material or conditioned state, all living entities, everything is maintained by Krishna himself and, and uh, we become the maintained person. And what is the Samband avide, what is the process or the uh, activity which is to be performed to know this that Krishna is the maintainer and we are the maintain? The process is devotional service. So, unflinching faith in Krishna and rendering of devotional service by chanting, by doing other activities, spiritual activities, that is the avide, that is the process of attaining this knowledge that Krishna is the maintainer, we are the maintain. And what is the ultimate uh, prayojan? Samband avide and prayojan. What is the prayojan? Prayojan is the objective of doing all this activity is of this knowledge is to develop Krishna prema and to get liberated from this material bond of life. So that is the three things which are mentioned here. Now Krishna has described the, uh, the attributes or the qualities of his spiritual world here. And how can one reach there? The process is, we have already, how to get rid of three modes of material nature? We have already studied in, uh, in the last chapter. That process was, and what the process was, the outcome of the process was liberation. So now Krishna is, tad dharma parmam mam. That is dhama. That, that is, that is parma means it is supreme, full of six opulences, full of transcendence, there is no coming, going back from uh, that place. So that is my dham, that is my... Yes, Mataji, that abode is not... That, that abode is not... Yes, yeah, please That abode is not illuminated by sun, moon, fire or electricity. Once attained, one never returns to the material world. Yes. This is very important shloka. And they said we had been right from chapter number one to... Up 14, we had been quoting this verse uh, uh, time and again. Yes, Mataji. And everybody is expected to remember this word, this verse. In fact, yes, please, Mataji. Mamevan sho jeev loke, jeev bhuta sanatana, 
मनस्थानी प्रकृति स्थानी करस्थती द लिविंग एंटिटीज इन दिस कंडीशन वर्ल्ड आर माई आर माई इटर्नल फ्रेगमेंटल पार्ट ड्यू टू कंडीशन लाइफ दे आर स्ट्रगलिंग वेरी हार्ड विद द सिक्स सेंसेस विच इंक्लूड द माइंड थैंक यू माता जी सो ममई वंशो मई ममई ममई अंशो दे आर माई पार्ट एंड पार्सल्स दे आर फ्रेगमेंटेड पार्ट जीव लोके जीव भूता सनातन जीव भूता मीन्स लिविंग एंटिटीज आर सनातन दे आर इटर्नल बट इन दिस वर्ल्ड दे आर माई इटर्नल फ्रेगमेंटेड पार्ट एंड पार्सल मन षष्टानी इंद्रियाणी मन एंड इंक्लूडिंग माइंड द सिक्स वी नो फाइव इंद्रिया प्लस माइंड दैट इज सिक्स इंद्रियाणी प्रकृति स्थानी करशति प्रकृति स्थानी मीन्स दिस मेटीरियल नेचर और मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड दे आर करशति मीन स्ट्रगलिंग वेरी वेरी हार्ड सो दिस इज वी हैड बीन टॉकिंग दैट वी आर इटर्नल पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ लॉर्ड दिस इज द वर्ड्स वी बीन रेफरिंग टू ममे वांशो जीव लोक जीव भूत सनातन मन षष्टानी इंद्राणी प्रकृति स्थानी करशति नॉ लिविंग एंटिटीज इन कंडीशन आर माई इटर्नल दो दे आर एज आई जस्ट नॉ मैंशन दैट कॉन्शियसनेस इज प्योर सोल इज प्योर बट सटिल बॉडीज कैरी सर्टिन कॉन्सेप्शंस और भाव विद अलॉन्ग विद इट एंड वॉट इज सटिल बॉडी anybody will define what is subtle body the three components which makes subtle body mind, mind and intelligence and mind intelligence and false ego false ego yeah. so these these carry our impressions con- conceptions convictions or bhava from one life form to another form of life so then when this uh, Uh, the soul in uh, the consciousness the soul is it, it pure satchit anand it, it is because it is fragmented part of lord it is not conditioned at that time but as soon as it comes into association with material world or material nature then it becomes conditioned when it becomes conditioned it what does really conditioning means what is what we understand by pure consciousness that conditioned consciousness So what But in the mind? ignorance, also we need to be aware of uh, Krishna. Yes, I, 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 yes, Mata Ji, uh, Swami Prabhu Mata Ji, you were saying something. Covered by Maya. Covered by Maya, or under influence of the uh, three modes of material nature. That is also the same thing, almost. Thank you. So we become conditioned. Conditioned by three modes of material nature, and we forcibly the the mode of particular nature, the particular mode material mode of nature, it forces us to do act in certain manner only. So, and conditioning means second meaning of conditioning is that we forget that we are eternal part and parcel of Lord. We try to act independently because Lord, after fragmentation, there is some kind degree of independence from the. a parent source so this this minute independence independence is granted to this uh, eternal uh, soul uh, in the because it has fragmented from the source now when this minute independence is available then the soul or the individual living entity act, uh, tends to act independently independently means forgets forgetting relationship with lord the end also wants to exercise lo- proprietorship or lordship over the material nature considering that it is all mind so the result is the, the more and more entanglement with material nature happens this tree the material uh, this this inverted banyan tree becomes stronger and stronger when it becomes stronger and stronger it is very it becomes more and more difficult to cut uh, with the asanga shastra now then it becomes very difficult to cut so Uh, how can we do uh, then only one those the seven qualities which we have just now read plus surrender then only we can cut this tree of uh, attachment or the inverted banyan tree so they are eternal part, uh, my eternal fragmental part where they have separated parts but they have forgotten that they are my part and due to condition life they are struggling very hard there is no struggle in is transcendental world or spiritual world but in this material world there is a struggle at every every step 
and with the six senses because we are thinking we are using our mind for thinking feeling and willing and we are using our senses for different sense or utilization or gratification of our senses by utilizing those sense objects that is why we are struggling so this struggle can be you know uh, curtailed by only asanga shastrina or cutting this material relationship uh, relationship with material world and surrendering to the lord yes mataji this verse please remember my mama ivansho jeev loke jeev bhuta sanatana please remember this memorize yes after this verse anybody else would like to read and please raise your raise your hand richajan mataji please finish this text yes prabhu this verse gives the identity of the living being the living entity is the fragmental part and the parcel of the supreme lord eternally it is not that he assumes individuality in his conditional life and is in his liberated state becomes one with the supreme lord he is eternally fragmented it is clearly said sanatanha according to the vedic version the supreme lord manifest and expands himself in innumerable expansions of which the primary expansions are called vishnu tattva and the secondary expansions are called the living entities thank you mata ji so the as i just now mentioned after fragmentation what happens the soul acquires an individuality we know that there is individual soul and there is a supreme soul individual soul is that of living entity which is confined and that chetra chetra ke that we i think you will remember that individual soul knows about individual soul knows about its own field of activity or on body and the supreme soul that knows about the bodies of all living entities so this is parmatma form so living entity becomes assumes an individuality as as soon as it becomes separate from lord krishna now what happens when there is an individual he wants to act independently this minute independence because of uh, fragmentation is there and that is what makes us conditioned we but we are sanatana that means we are eternal like satchit anand vikra lord krishna is satchit anand he is eternally blissful knowledgeable and uh, always eternal so that that uh, opulence is with the living entity also but they forget about it this relationship forget now second part of this verse is that uh, that uh, how this fragmentation has happened transmigration from one place to another place has, has taken place it was vishnu tattva first and vishnu tattva was primary expansion now when we will talk about avatar then krishna lord or the krishna first of all uh, expanded as balaram then sankarsana then aniruddha and then so this this is how expansion happened and from sankarsana karnak dukshai vishnu then shirok dukshai vishnu and garbho dukshai vishnu they came, came into existence so these are all secondary expansions primary expansion was vishnu tattva which is the source yes riya mata ji please continue now vishnu tattva riya mata ji okay prabhu ji hari krishna the vishnu hari krishna uh, the vishnu tattva is the personal expansion and the living entities are the separated expansions by his personal expansion he is manifested in various forms like lord rama narsimha deva vishnu murti and all predominating deities in the vaikuntha planets the separated expansions the living entities are eternally servitors the personal expansions of the supreme person of godhead the individual identities of the godhead are always present hari so, krishna thank you mataji so personal expansion and then uh, personal expansion we know there are the shavatar and the other uh, deities residing in the vaikuntha planets they are all personal expansion and separated expansions i think we understand by what personal expansion and uh, um, separated in expansions mean and separated expansions are living entities living entities we know all those 8400000 uh, species with living entities so all those are including lord brahma himself so there are personal expansion personal expansion krishna has uh, expanded into that form but we are 
not personal expansion. We are fragmented. We have broken away from uh, Krishna, and that is how we are existing. So these are this is the difference. Yes, my pleasure. Separated. Please continue. Uh, the separated uh, the separated expansions of living entities have their identities. As fragmental parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord, the living entities also have fragmental portions of his qualities, of which independence is one. By misuse of that independence, one becomes a conditioned soul dominated by the modes, and by proper use of independence, he is always liberated. In either case, he is qualitatively eternal, as the Supreme Lord is. In his liberated state, he is freed from this material condition, and he is under the engagement of the transcendental service unto the Lord, forgets the transcendental loving service of the Lord. So Hare Krishna. This, thank you, Mati. So this is the status of conditioned soul and liberated soul. Conditioned soul, liberated soul, rem always remembers that it is the part and parcel of Lord Krishna. It is always the eternal uh, part and parcel of Krishna and eternal servitor or servant of Krishna. There is everything belongs to Krishna. He is only a servant, a servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna. And he is beyond three more so material nature, assumes the opulences which Lord possesses. But in conditioned states, it forgets that the relationship or sambandha and the even the process and the vyojan, uh, prayojan is also lost. And in the conditioned state, it becomes independent, individual soul. Independent means wants to act independently, comes under contact, uh, comes in association with three more so material nature, gets bound by the rope of three more so material nature, is forced to act according to the particular dominance of that material nature. And the result is that there is more and more fruitive activities and more and more binding into the cycle of birth and death. So that, that is how the, this material world or this inverted banyan tree is. So what is the process of knowing the, the, some, uh, the, uh, the uh, someone and prayojan is to get liberation from this kind of status. And liberation by Asanga Shastrina. Yes, Mataji. Uh, the, living, the living entities, not only human beings, and the cats and dogs, but even the greater controllers of the material world, Brahma, Lord Shiva, and even Vishnu, are all parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. And they are all eternal, not temporary manifestations. The word karsati, struggling or grappling hard, is very significant. The conditioned soul is bound up as though sickled by iron chains. He is bound up by the false ego. And the mind is a cheap agent which is driving him in this material existence. When the mind is in the mode of goodness, his activities are good. When the mind is in the mode of patience, his activities are troublesome. And when the mind is in the mode of ignorance, he travels in the lower species of life. So, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. So, uh, Karsati. Karsati means struggling and grappling very hard. Why we are grappling very hard? If we are, we were in a liberated state, there is no struggle. We are in the company of presence, of the divine presence of Lord Krishna himself. And there is no struggle. There is no, except devotional service, there is nothing to, to be done. There are calm then cow, cows, there is uh, akshay, what is there? There is a, a plant a tree which is giving all kind of fruits and all kind of, there is so much of opulence, so much of uh, uh, transcendence of everything. But in this material world, we have to struggle very hard because we are conditioned. We co become a condition, we forget relationship with Krishna. We or want to exercise our ownership over material nature. We want to own things. We think that we, we are the doer. So that is how we are conditioned. So what one has to do, like, you know, iron chain binds, and this is an analogy given here, like a iron chain binds a person's hands, then he can't act. So similarly, we are also iron chained by three modes of material nature. We can't act independently because so what one has to do by process of knowledge, by process of surrender to Lord, one has to break the shackles of this uh, iron chain and be uh, uh, and surrender to Lord Krishna. So and this we have already uh, seen that what are the act activities performed by uh, persons who are in mode of goodness, passion, and 
and how they are binding the mode of goodness, uh, always uh, pious activities, uh, nishkam karma yoga and uh, sakam karma yoga, but there is knowledge of the values of higher, uh, higher value, and there is knowledge of higher values of life. So person for, so performs pious activities and by performance of pious activities in mode of goodness, one can get a chance to go to higher planets. But since the activities were fruitive, fruitive in nature, or they were karm kandi and they were not nishkam, person returns back to the uh, cycle of earth and, uh, birth and death. And in the passion, it is always fruitive activities, lot of endeavor, lot of uh, attachment to different material objects, the uh, attempt to possess more and more that is binding in nature, the person remains at the uh, material world uh, through the repeated cycle of birth and death. And in the mode of uh, ignorance, it is just foolishness and there is no good activity, everything acting against the Vedic in injunctions, no regulative principle, no, uh, there is indolence, sleep, uh, madness, and lethargy. So the activities are all foolish and they are neither beneficial for self nor for others. The result is person goes down to lower planets, hellish planets, and takes person lower species. Yes, Mataji. The condition soul. The condition soul is covered by the material body with the mind and the senses and when he is liberated this material material covering perishes but his spiritual body manifests itself in its individual capacity by the grace of the lord the revived spiritual body can see the supreme personality of godhead face to face he can hear and speak to him face to face and he can understand the supreme personality of God, as he is from smriti also it is understood Basanti Yatra Purusa Sarve Vaikuntha Murtaya. In the spiritual planets, everyone lives in bodies fe featured like Supreme Personality of Godheads. As far uh, uh, as bodily construction is concerned, there is no difference between the part and parcel living entities and the expansions of Vishnu Murti. Mm. Hare Krishna. So, one as soon as this covering of conditioning, conditioning or the conditioned life is uh, taken off, the person becomes liberated. And the li on liberation, person goes, surrenders to Lord Krishna, goes to Krishna Loka. In Krishna Loka, the body of Krishna Loka and the devotee or the liberated soul is same. Opulences are same, but the degree is less. The quantitatively, it is less. So there, uh, person lives like, the, like Lord Krishna. He lives there, he talks to Krishna, has to face to face because it is liberated. There is no three mode interaction of three modes of material nature. There is no material nature. It is all transcendental there. Yes, Mataji. The words. Uh, the words Mame Vamsha, fragmental parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord are also very significant. The fragmental portion of the Supreme Lord is not like some material broken part. The spirit cannot be cut into pieces. The fragmental portion is eternal, sanatana. Each and every individual body possesses the fragmental portion of the Supreme Lord. Dehinos mean yatha dehe. That fragmental portion, when liberated from the bodily entanglement, revives its original spiritual body in the spiritual sky, in a spiritual planet, and enjoys association with the Supreme Lord. It is, however, understood here that the living entities, being the fragmental part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, is qualitatively one with the Lord, just as the parts and parcels of gold are also gold. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. So, fragmental part, Mamai Vansho Jeev Loki. The living entities are my eternal fragmental part and parcel, but separated. Now, separated means that, now let us take an example of a toy. If it is broken into multiple pieces, so the, that is a broken material parts. But fragmented, that means the soul, we know we have prop, uh, studied the property of soul in uh, chapter number two, that soul is eternal, it is not touched by fire, not made wet by the water, it, what we are cannot touch it, it can't be killed, it can't be touched, it can't be seen, it is so minute, all these properties of soul we have studied. So it does, 
fragmented and we know that Purnamada uh, Purnamidam it is when the whole comes out of the whole it is when a part come out comes out of the whole it still remains the whole it, it possesses the same qualities as the whole and yet the whole remains the same Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamada we remember this is this is the beginning prayer, invocation prayer in uh, Isha Upanishad so this is this verse we always in during the worship or the when we offered the last oblation to the sacred uh, sacrificial fire. This verse is sung, Purnamada Purnamidam. So the fragmented part is not like a broken part of a toy. It is complete in itself. It is it has all the qualities which Lord possesses because this soul is it has de 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 uh, separated from a super soul and it contains all the qualities all the attributes of the uh, it, uh, the super soul but mind there is there is uh, the qualitatively it is same quantitatively it is very small because it is con uh, confined to an individual only so that is the me the, the meaning of the fragmented part but it is it is eternal and now it does not undergo any change. We remember this sloka Dehino Asmin Yatha Dehi Koma Ram Yavanam Jara Tadantar Dehantar Praptar Dheeras Tatra Namuhiyati. That means that this body is this body is material. It is made of 24 elements. It is subject to changes, but the soul is eternal. It does not undergo any change. It remains the same as it is. That is, the consciousness only is lost at the time of departure of soul from the body. And it, so it is, it is, uh, it may become contaminated or, uh, you know, uh, conditioned, but the consciousness still remains the pure. So the meaning of this uh, verse is, they know as many that the, con the body is material, undergoes many changes, but the soul is eternal part and parcel of Lord Krishna or Supreme Soul, it does not undergo any kind of change. So the living entities have to understand that they are eternal part and parcel of Lord Krishna. Yes, Mataji? Uh, the yoga of the Supreme Person, what is the identity of the living being? Original position, living entities are eternal part and parcels uh, um, oh. Living entities are eternal part and parcels of Krishna. Living entities belong to Supreme Lord in the spiritual world. Current position, they are now struggling hard with mind and senses in the material world. So this is this is the final summary of the verse 7. That we, our position, real position is that we are eternal part and parcel of Lord. Our abode is not material world. Our original home, back home, we have to go back home, back to Godhead. That is Krishna Loka. That is our real home. And that is our spiritual world, not this material world. But being in the material world, we are using our intelligence, That they, I mean, uh, using our six senses, the mind and five senses, and we are struggling. You can see these people here in mode of ignorance, what they all kind of activities they are doing, because they are thinking they are trying to own something they are trying to enjoy something they are trying to uh, do some kind of self sense gratification they have forgotten the relationship with krishna and they are indulging in activities which are which are not pious which are impious that is what we are that is why uh, the our grounding in this material world or the our tree of eter this Venian tree in this material, it, material world is grounded very, very firmly and it is very become becomes very difficult to root it out. Yes, anyone else would like to? Mataji, please finish this first. Then anyone else would like to read? Please raise your hand. Okay, yeah, yes, Mataji, please read, read this. Okay. The living entity in the material world carries the different... Uh, Conceptions. Different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air car carries the aromas. Thus he takes one kind of body and again quits it to take another. Sariram yad abab noti yag chapi utkra masti swara grihit vetani samyati vayur gandhan 
Eva Sayad. The living entity in the material world carries its different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air carries the aromas. Hare Krishna. So this is a just analogy. We know that air does not is without any fragrance normally. But when it gets in touch with grass, when it touch, gets in touch with some foul smelling item or when it gets in touch with some fine fragrance flower, then it, it, the fragrance is carried by the air. And ultimately when it reaches us, we smell that particular kind of fragrance or smell. But the air by itself is pure. It is not contaminated. It is not, uh, it does not have any kind of fragrance or uh, smell with it. Similarly, the soul is also like air. It is, uh, it is free from all kind of contamination. It is eternal part and parcel of Lord. And But when it comes in contact with the smells or the three modes of material nature or association of any kind of material nature, then it develops that kind of smell or that kind of activity. So this is an analogy is given here that in this material world, uh, similarly, the body, the, uh, the, the subtle body I just now mentioned, the mind, intelligence and false ego, they carry certain con conception with them. Now these conceptions are the reason for that the particular form of life in the next birth. And these conceptions are carried and Lord is like a loving father, merciful father. Whatever conceptions we are carrying or convictions we are carrying, those convictions are given a shape by permitted by Lord Krishna by giving a glance on the soul. And the the immediately the Mahatattva or the three modes of material nature, they immediately give that kind of form to the body, uh, to the soul, that kind of body or physical form to the soul. So this is the purpose of saying this uh, uh, This uh, uh, translation is that whatever concept we carry at the time of leaving our body, that that concept decides our next form of life. So air, uh, uh, example or analogy of air is given here uh, in this verse. Yes, anybody else would like to read? Mataji, for Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, I'd like to read. Yes, Mataji, Sam Prabhuji, Dhanivar Mataji, please continue. Here the, Here the living entity is described as Ishwara, the controller of his own body. If he likes, he can change his body to a higher grade, and if he likes, he can move to a lower class. Minute independence is there. The change his body undergoes depends upon him. At the time of death, the consciousness he has created will carry him on to the next type of body. If he has made his consciousness like that of a cat or a dog, he's sure to change to a cat or a dog's body. And if he has fixed his consciousness on godly qualities, he will change into the form of a... I can't see that remaining. Um. He will change into the form of, if he carries, he wants to say godly, he changed into the form of a godly feature, something like that is good. I'm sorry okay. if it's not visible. So this is very important. In fact, whatever impressions we carry at the moment of our leaving this body is very, very significant. And also was past karma. So that, that one has to be very, very cautious. What we are going to, in fact, to... Uh, conception we are putting, uh, going to carry at the time of leaving this body. So that is important. And the karmas, they decide about next form of life. So uh, Lord also has mentioned that uh, yam yam bapi ismaran bhavam. Whatever we conception or ismaran bhavam, whatever feelings we carry at the time of leaving body, that decides our next form of life. So that is why, you know, in, in normal course of life, when people die, uh, at the time point of leaving this body, then uh, people start uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai or something like that, or Kirtan or Krishna's name. So that person hears that. And this is what exactly happened with Ajamila. We remember the case of Ajamila. At the moment of his leaving body, he called his son, which incidentally happened to be Narayana. He was very passionate, very attached to that youngest child of his. Uh, so 
Narayana, remembering Narayana at the time of body or at the time of leaving the body brought Vishnu Dutas to, uh, to his uh, deathbed. And also the because karmas were very not were not very pious and good, so uh, the yamdutas also came, and there was a struggle between them why who should take the soul. But ultimately, the uh, Ajamila was given a second chance to go to Haridwar, do lot of sacrifice, penance, and austerity, and then he was liberated, and Vishnu Duta came. So this is very important. Whatever concept we carry at the time of leaving body, that concept takes the shape of next form of life. Yes, Mataji? And if and if he is in Krishna consciousness, he will be transferred to Krishna Loka in the spiritual world and will associate with Krishna. It is a false claim that after annihilation of this body, everything is finished. The individual soul is transmigrating from one body to another and his present body and present activities are the background of his next body. One gets a different body according to karma, and he has to quit his body in the course. It is stated here that the subtle body which carries the conception of the next body develops another body in the next life. This process of transmigrating from one body to another and struggling while in the body, as is called karshati, a str or struggle for existence. I think it has been sufficiently discussed before how the body transmigrates from one or to one form to other, and what decides the next form of life, and uh, how we are struggling in this present material world. That has already been discussed. We'll make it more next move. So yes, Mataji, please continue. The Yoga of the Supreme Person, Text 8, Process of Transmigration. Process of Transmigration and is explained. The living entity acquires a material mind and carries different conceptions of life from one body to the next. Analogy as the air carries aroma. Yeah, so you can see this person, uh, whatever is happening on the ground, he is enjoying the smell or aroma or fragrance of what is happening. So body, in fact, subtle body is carrying conception and the person, uh, the next form of life is decided by those conceptions. Yes, Mataji, 15.9. Shotram chakshuhu sparshanam cha rasanam granam eva cha adishthayam anashchayam vishayan upasevate the living entity, thus taking another gross body, obtains a certain type of ear, tongue and nose and sense of touch which are grouped about the mind. He thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects. The living entity, thus taking another gross body, obtains a certain types of ear, eyes, tongue, nose and sense of touch grouped about the mind. And then Adishthaya manas situated in mind, shrutram ear, chakshuhu the eyes, sparshanam sense of touch, rasanam tongue, and granam nose. Thank you, Mataji. So, living the next form of body, which is assumed by the living entity, has got a specific, you know, sense senses because. The senses are the enjoyer of the material world. And whatever particular sense is developed during that course of material life, that concept of that uh, uh, material life goes along with the subtle body to the next form of body. The result is sim based on that experience or conception, particular type of hearing, particular type of vision, particular type of touch or the taste, or, or the, you know, the fragrance is developed. We know there are, you know, there are certain kind of languages which we do not understand because we, we have not learned them, we, have, we don't have knowledge of them. Certain kind of sense is, we discussed in last meeting also that uh, certain animals have got a very highly developed one particular type of sense. 
the, the like the vultures or the eagles, they can have a vision of thousands of miles. Our vision is limited to a couple of feet or maybe a couple of kilometers only. But their vision is uh, expanded to thousands of kilometers. That is vision. Sense of touch also. Some, uh, you know, the, the, we know of a plant which is called touch me not, that we touch it, it, it immediately withers, the leaves wither. So it is very sensitive to touch. That, that is that concept of touch has come from the previous life of form because of some pious activities, the living entity called the life of a tree or plant. Now, similarly, tongue. Some people have very highly developed taste. Uh, uh, they are particular, especially, uh, you know, there is wine tasting, there is tea tasting. So many things are tasted by these tasters and they have got evolved sense of taste and they can define what quality of taste is. Some do not have. Similarly, nose and ear. Now, there's some animals are very, very sensitive. Like, for example, if a, go a dog, dog has got very highly developed sense of hearing. The sounds which normal, our, the wavelength of sound which is not audible to us is audible to, uh, to dogs. And there is a special kind of uh, uh, security whistle for, uh, dog whistle for security dogs, which is blown. We do not listen, but the dog at that frequency can listen to. So based on our propensities, based on our conception of previous life, the soul, the, the subtle body carries these conceptions or, and accordingly the next form of life, that particular sense is highly evolved or developed. So this is the meaning here. Yes, Mataji. If the living entity adulterates his consciousness with the qualities of cats and dogs, in his next life, he gets a cat or a dog body and enjoys. Consciousness is originally pure like water. But if he mix water with a certain color, it changes. Similarly, consciousness is pure, for the spirit soul is pure. But consciousness is changed according to the association of the material qualities. Real consciousness is Krishna consciousness. In this state, one is in his pure life. When adulterated, he does not necessarily get a human body again. He can get the body of a cat, dog, hog, demigod, or one of the many of the other forms, for there are 84 lakh species. Thank you, Mataji. So, this nut, nuts, nut and nut cell, uh, in nut cell, we can say that consciousness of the soul is pure, becomes contaminated by when it comes in with the mode of material nature, and uh, the real consciousness, which is uh, which the, the individual soul is, is part and parcel of Lord. It, it is a fragmented part. It is not broken. It is fragmented. It is complete in full opulences. It has got same qualities which Lord, but of course qualitatively um, the same, but quantitatively in a very very minute spark part. So this. Con this contamination or conditioning which happens with material mode of material nature that decides our next form of life and that whatever conception we carry in our subtle body from one life to another that decides our next form of life. So we, if one has the, I think everybody will remember the pictures of when a tree and a person eating indiscriminately, person eating indiscriminately in this life gets the body of a hog who hog or a pig who doesn't know the difference between sweet meat and some uh, stool of a, a human being. And similarly, a person who is fond of dressing in a half naked manner, uh, not proper, uh, wearing proper clothes, gets the life of a tree, the form, life form of a tree in next birth, because tree do not wear clothes. Yes, Mataji. <clears throat> Utkramantam sitam vapi hunjanam vagunan vitam vimudhananu pashyanti pashyanti jnana chakshusha. The foolish cannot understand how a living entity can quit his body, nor can they understand what sort of body he enjoys under the spell of the modes of nature. But one whose eyes are trained in knowledge can see all this. Thank you, Mataji. So you can see this person who is, uh, the car is broken in the midway and he is 
perturbed and bewildered what, what has gone wrong because he does not possess knowledge. But this person is a mechanic, a, a, a trained mechanic. He knows what the fault engine has developed. He corrects it immediately. So this is what is mentioned here in this verse. The foolish cannot understand how a living entity uh, can quit the body, nor can they understand that what sort of body he enjoys under the spell of most nature, but whose eyes are trained in knowledge can see this. And who is trained in uh, who, the person who is in Krishna consciousness, person who knows that he is soul, his eternal soul. He is not. He is not this material body. Person who knows that soul is part and parcel of Lord Krishna. Person who knows that it possesses all opulences, and the person who knows this world is not real. This world is material. This world is you know inverted material or uh, uh, tree, vanian tree. It is just a replica or reflection of the real world which is his real home, and that is his spiritual word, Goloka Vrindavana, or Krishna's abode, Krishna Loka, where he has by default uh, been uh, out in the, this material world and where he has to go back, go home, go back, back to Godhead. So this knowledge, that this someone once develops, then once tries Act, acts according to uh, that uh, established that sambandha and when the sambandha is established then that prayojan becomes uh, clear that he has to reach back to Krishna. So this, this is just a symbolic picture which shows the difference uh, between the but, but everybody cannot understand this thing. All, those who can understand they have to adopt to Krishna consciousness to this understand this fact and gets liberated by surrendering to Lord Krishna. Yes, Mataji. The word jnana chakshusha is very significant. Without knowledge, one cannot understand how a living entity leaves his present body, nor what form of body he is going to take in the next life, nor even why he is living in a particular type of body. Those who have developed spiritual knowledge, however, can see that spirit is different from the body and is changing its body and enjoying in different ways. A person in such knowledge can understand how the conditioned living entity is suffering in the material existence. People need this knowledge as their conditional life is very much troublesome. They should become Krishna conscious and liberate themselves to transfer to the spiritual world. Thank you, Mataji. So, Jnana Chakshus, the eyes of wisdom, the eyes of knowledge. Person who has this knowledge that oh, what is my real position, what is my real constitutional position in relation to Lord Krishna, what is my sambandha with Lord Krishna, he, one who knows this fact has got Jnana Chakshus. And who are the other type of people? A fool, who, 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 they have got the other type of people who have, who have conditioned life, they are, they are uh, basically um, ignorant. They do not possess this knowledge. And why? Because of lust and desires in the, to enjoy this material world. They do not possess this knowledge. The result is, the difference between two is that one who possesses this knowledge works on it, thinks about the uh, yoga and how the process, finds out the activities which he has to perform to establish this knowledge and relation, establish this lost relationship with Krishna. So, uh, for person who is conditioned or who is full of lust and desires, who is bound by these material modes of material nature, he becomes conditioned. And for him to attain this knowledge is very difficult. So that means we have to do Asanga Shastrina. We have to detach ourselves from this material world by firm determination by the basis of this knowledge. So, but this knowledge is not enough, in fact. The devotional service, why one has to, after attaining this knowledge, one has to surrender and to perform devotional service. And what is devotional service? In our life, say, let us take the practical example uh, of us uh, the, the, uh, at the moment. What we, devotional service we can do? We can follow the four regulative principles. We can get up early in the morning in Brahma Hurti, do uh, attend the temple or uh, our Mangala Arti or do ourselves at home, our Mangala Arti, Guru Puja and Tushi Puja. 
we can fast on uh, certain ek ekadashis and other auspicious days and we can always do loving devotional service in temple or krishna consciousness and what platform uh, is available to us krishna, uh, the platform which is available to us is provided by iskon or krishna consciousness you know everything is so pious all around there that one gets motivated one gets in association of uh, pure devotees and taking shelter of his spiritual master following his guidelines serving the spiritual master and pure devotees one develops this knowledge and comes to the conclusion that life is material and one has to rise above this material life yes mata ji yatantu yogi nashchayam yatantu yogi nashchayam pashyanti atmani avasthitam yatantu api akritatmano nainam pashyanti achitasaha the endeavoring transcendentalist who is situated in self realization can see all this clearly mm -hmm. but those who are not situated in self realization cannot see what is taking place through though they may try to thank you so that means emphasis again as i mentioned just now how to proceed after surrender association of devotees without association it is impossible Uh, the Lord will also not not help. Even sense enjoyment is impossible without the help of the Lord. So one can develop this Krishna consciousness only in this living living bird by appreciating that Krishna is the maintainer. We are the maintained that samband, the knowledge of this sambandha, and how to establish this sambandha, the process of establishing this sambandha, and of course with the objective or prayojan. Prayojan is to develop Krishna consciousness, Krishna prem. and ultimately seek liberation go back to home back to godhead so this these uh, helps us to know uh, this verse in fact help us to know that what is taking place in the material world and how we can uh, get ourselves freed from this material world reaching spiritual world so this this is the verse number 11 here now you can see the association of pure devotees guidance of the spiritual master and of course following the uh, orders or directives of uh, guidelines provided by the spiritual master because he is tatvadarshi he has seen the truth he knows he is self realized his soul is elevated and he knows krishna science very well yes mata ji the transcendentalist on the path of spiritual self realization but yet to attain self realization cannot see how things are changing in the body of the living entity yatanto api akritatmanah yogis endeavoring in a so called yoga system of gymnastic exercise are not self realized they cannot understand the process of the transmigration of the soul only those who are in bhakti yoga realize the self as the world and the supreme lord thank you they can understand how things are taking place including transmigration of so, the souls this is summary how who can see this understand this is science of krishna krishna science or science of soul or that how the process of transmigration of soul is taking place only those who are in krishna consciousness who understand that krishna is the maintainer we are the maintainer we are not body we are soul such persons only who have uh, who work in krishna consciousness who act in krishna consciousness they can know this path of self spiritual realization that this is not our real home but other other modes of approach we have already studied in earlier chapters the karma yoga the gyan yoga the ashtang yoga they are very very tedious path they do not such persons who practice this this yoga they do not have the access of this knowledge the result is that uh, person who is in bhakti yoga he can know this science very easily and of course uh, can establish that relationship with krishna and go back to uh, go back to back to godhead so uh, what is really happening in this material world why person is doing this thing how the he person person dies how he takes next birth what decides the next form of life who decides next form of life this science of krishna can be understood by devotees only and not by any other people so result is yes 
we can see the result those not trained in the knowledge of uh, are in ignorance. What is the cure of this ignorance? Krishna says knowledge. And how to attain this knowledge? Those who are trained can see all this clearly because their minds are verified by yoga practice and thus situated in self-realization. But those whose minds are not developed and who are not situated in self-realization cannot see what is taking place through, though they may try to. So bhakti yogis are the actual yogis. They have self-realized soul, self and world and the Supreme Lord, they have clear concept of what they are, what world, this material world is, and what Supreme Lord is, and they can see things as they are. So the real vision is possessed by Bhakti Yoga, devotees in Bhakti Yoga only. The, the devotees who are trying to reach, know this knowledge through Karma Yoga or Gyan Yoga or Ashtang Yoga or any other kind of uh, speculative science, they cannot understand this knowledge. So we have ended section B today. We we'll now push the third section. Will uh, we will know how the how Krishna maintain is the maintainer. We just now said that we are maintained that Krishna is the maintainer. This is our relationship with Krishna, or this is our sambandha with Lord Krishna. Now Krishna is going to tell how he is the maintainer. So this we will cover on, the, on Monday and. Uh, uh, just, just to have a broad uh, concept of this chapter beforehand, uh, how do we think we are mm, being maintained by Krishna and uh, Krishna is the maintainer? Can somebody, uh, there are three solid examples. Can somebody uh, recollect from level one, what are those three, uh, any one of those three, uh, how we are maintained by Krishna, how Krishna, we, how Krishna is maintaining our uh, material body? Any idea? Anyone? Or this universe entity, not only our body, but entire universe, how is it meant? Why we call him maintainer? Yes, Prabhuji, Mataji. Just any vague concept, whatever you think is there. Uh, Prabhuji, I will try. Yes, Mataji, please. Because uh, Kri Krishna as a uh, enter um, uh, every living entity as a paramatma uh, or super soul, yeah. and he is guiding guiding uh, us in our life. Uh, very nice, very nice. Yes, Krishna is present as super soul, so he is guiding. That is how he is maintaining us. He is guiding and he is observing. He is anudrashta, anumanta. He is permitting also. So we are. That is how one one way he is maintaining. Yes, very nice. Any other idea? Any other Prabhuji and Mataji? Swami Prabha Mataji, your Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes. Sarva karana karana. Yes. ಸರ್ವಕಾರಣಕಾರಣಾ Uh, being maintained by Krishna, what is the role of Lord? Are we doing it ourselves? That is, things are happening or Krishna has a role in what we are doing or what we are... Think of those things. What is happening in the universe? How is the maintainer of uh, this? Uh, Prabhuji, uh, by taking birth and as we come into this creation, Uh, our desire uh, make us to entangle with the materialistic world so krishna is so kind that he is giving again and again you know intimation again and again uh, he is giving us he wake up wake up wake up and uh, that's what we are uh, uh, getting into uh, birth after birth and uh, again we are falling down and again he is giving chance so the maintainer is giving ample of time ample of chances to get uh, out of this uh, bandha means uh, the death and uh, birth 
so that uh, we as a part of super soul will get merge again back to him uh, thank you bhatiji so anyway thanks all all of you are correct perfectly correct uh, in, in a sense but what krishna is going to tell in verse number 12 to 15 is three ways first he is holding the entire universe in place all the planets are moving in a disciplined manner they are not falling down each one is rotating over the other or something something like that each one is performing its duties and functions efficiently in a very disciplined regular manner number one secondly he is present as mata ji just now mentioned about he is present as super soul yes he is present in the in our stomach as fire अहम वैश्वा नरो भूतवाम प्राणी नाम देह माश्रित प्राण पान समायुक्त पचाम चतुर्विधम द फूड इज वी आर मेंटेन बिकॉज वी आर ईटिंग फूड एंड फूड वी ईट देन इट गोज टू स्टमक इट गेट्स डाइजेस्टेड देयर पास इज थ्रू इंटेस्टिंग वेयर द इसेंशियल एलिमेंट्स आर एब्जॉर्ड एंड द एब्जॉर्ड इसेंशियल एलिमेंट्स गिव अस स्ट्रेंथ एंड लाइफ फोर्स एंड द मेंटेनर्स सो कृष्णा सेज दैट आई एम फायर इन योर स्टमक विच इज गिविंग which is digesting the food this is second example first was universe holding all the universe and planets in place so that they are working in a regular cyclic or disciplined manner second is presence in the form of and third how we are maintaining what is the function of function of the mind thinking willing and feeling these are three properties of mind so krishna has given us our mind the forgetfulness the memory and also the uh, memory then the knowledge gyanam so now you just imagine the knowledge he is the knowledge he has given us the knowledge without knowledge we cannot attain anything and he has given us remembrance we whatever we remember is due to presence of krishna in us and whatever we are forgetting forgetfulness that is more most one of the most important feature of human life forgetfulness we know we are affected by some kind sometimes we are affected by a particular incident or a tragedy to very very great extent but gradually forget it we cannot we cannot always be remain in the same kind of happiness or sorrow or grief all the time so this these three qualities krishna is maintaining us now do you think it would have been possible for any living entity to live comfortably if he had no forgetfulness if he had so much of sorrow or grief in his life and that it continues for indefinitely that can one person live so these are three examples which krishna is going to give in 15.12 to 15 in coming verse and that pushes that the krishna's position as the maintainer he says that i am the maintainer but how he is maintaining us we'll discuss on monday thank you very much for your association and your valuable input prabhu ji and mata ji we'll meet again to, uh, on monday same time please uh, read this uh, next section is most beautiful part of the bhagavad gita one of the most beautiful part so um, any questions quick questions we have already overshot the time limit